Welcome to this Debaku University video where if you're growing plants indoors and wondering how uh, you can irrigate them or what options you have, this is the video for you. All right, let's get into indoor irrigation options for cannabis production. First off, you have to determine if the plant needs water um, by lifting the containers usually to gauge the water weight. Uh, this is simply lifting uh, the containers, particularly if you're growing in containers, it's better to use sometimes than meters. Meters can be used as a backup, but getting that literal feel of your plants yourself is probably the best method, especially early on to determine whether or not they should be watering them. Now, when to fertilize? Well, fertilized uh, water should be added each time you water your plants uh, with low doses. The goal is to have these low dose and feed each and every day to allow plants to maintain consistent growth. Some growers will choose to do maybe a six day and the seventh day they kind of do a freshwater flush. Uh, but the key part here is getting away from once a week fertilizing to every day, but lower the dose down. Um, so you're just providing that little bit of a consistent feed to your plants. Now, irrigation in general is defined as uh, the process of applying controlled amounts of water to plants at needed intervals. How the water is delivered is really up to the grower. Ideally, the plant's performance will not differ among different irrigation systems if each is performed correctly. So that's why it's important to know the options because there really isn't necessarily one best option. And that's the reason why there are options. Each method does have its own set of advantages and disadvantages, which is why growers need to select, quote, the best fit for their operation. So one uh, option would be basically growing hydroponically. And the advantage is it can really allow for maximum yields, and it's used a lot in the lettuce industry, as we see here. However, the disadvantages to this method is that there's a smaller margin for error when compared to buffered substrates. Swings in pH, for example, can occur very rapidly in hydroponic setups. Then there is hand watering, and that's the advantage that it allows for very specific pl uh, plant to plant care. Uh, if one plant needs a little bit more, you can give it a little bit more. One needs a little bit less, you can give it a little bit less. However, the disadvantage is that this is very time consuming and plants can be missed, especially if you're growing a lot of plants. Then there's the fl uh, flood and drain or the ebb and flow method. And the advantage is that this offers even watering. It's a basically a table here that floods and drains. Um, this allows also for the aeration of the root zone. However, the disadvantages are the initial cost and setup of equipment, as well as maintaining the equipment and keeping it clean from cycle to cycle. Then we have indoor drip irrigation. And the advantage is, is that this is very easy to automate and offers plant-specific watering because you can add these little emitters to individual plants. The disadvantage is, of course, the initial cost and setup of equipment and also continually checking to ensure all tubings, um, tubes and fittings are all functioning and working properly, and making sure filters aren't getting clogged. Then lastly, we have aeroponics, and the advantage of aeroponics is that this allows for uh, efficient at delivering nutrients to the roots. It also allows for easy visual inspection of the root structure. The disadvantage is that this is dependent on electricity and can uh, become less efficient when dense roots are formed as far as depending on the exact setup that you may have. So hopefully this offers some options. Check out this channel for more details on each of these options for indoor irrigation of your cannabis plants.